Hello, I'm Joshua from Authentic Aquatics, located in North Carolina. Today I will be discussing the procedure in setting up a basic freshwater tank. The first step is to pick a tank according to the size fish you are interested in. For a tropical community, a 20 gallon long or 20 tall will be an excellent start for most schooling fish in a variety of different lone swimmers such as live breeders and small gormish. The maximum size fish for a 20 gallon is probably about 5 or 6 inches because it becomes difficult for large varieties to get exercise. If you are going with tropical semi aggressive uh, African cichlids or South American cichlids, you should probably go with a 29 or more just because they tend to get a lot larger than community fish. Goldfish on the other hand are more suited for cold water and need space so they are healthier in ponds but some varieties can be kept in aquariums however it would probably be a 29 gallon or more because ammonia tends to build up fast. After you have picked up a tank appropriate for the size fish you are interested in you should get a good substrate. The substrate not only adds an attractive look to the aquarium but it also houses colonies of bacteria that will help break down waste in your tank. The substrate is much more important to salt water than it is fresh water, so you have more sway for what you can use in your tank. Make sure to clean your substrate before throwing it into your tank because most substrates will have debris that will cause your tank to become cloudy and possibly harm your fish and more, and more severe cases cause death. Then once you have placed your clean substrate into the aquarium, you can add water and start up your filter. Your filter should be appropriate to the size tank, but if you have a large tank and small fish, there's a possibility that your fish will get sucked into your filter. So what I would do is I'd take a car wash sponge and stick it over the intake valve so that your fish will be less likely to get sucked into the current. The most common fish that this will happen to is young angels below 3 inches as they have an odd body shape and their swim pattern is less developed. Although the filter will aerate your water, you're better off to get an aerator like I have running here because it's much more effective and it won't cause your fish oxygen depredation. So after you have your filters, your air pumps, your water put in and you have the gravel on the bottom, you can begin to think about your water conditioning. Now what I would do is, I'd, even if you're sure that your water is perfectly clean coming out of the tap, I would throw in some water conditioner, some distiller, anything that you think is appropriate to create a perfect environment for your fish. Um, another thing you might want to do is just in case that you have diseases early on in the starting aquarium, because if you're buying them from big stores you're likely to encounter ick, fin rot. I would buy medications that you can automatically just throw into your tank as soon as you notice it. However, when you buy Riddick and a lot of the name brand stuff, anything that's curing a parasite, it's going to kill the bacteria that's helping your tank along. So, top thin, a couple different, um, a couple different suppliers sell this bacteria supplement that sort of kick starts your tank back up and you can throw in bacteria starter as soon as you want to if you're starting up your tank and you feel you need an extra kick to get your filter and your substrate colonized with new in um, new bacterias you can automatically just throw it in if you feel it's necessary and you're more likely to be able to put fish in earlier on the next thing you might want to think about is adding aquarium salt now, when you're dealing with mollies, platies, tetras, um, sword tails, what you might want to do is throw some salt in because it, for mollies especially, it'll cause their gill function to be much better. It'll keep diseases from getting in the tank and overall they're just a lot more active when you throw it in here. I have quite a few mollies myself. I have a sword tail swimming there and then I have three neon tetras and uh, some harlequins, but I would throw in aquarium salt unless you have angelfish as they're not too keen on it. They'd rather be in fresh water with densely planted areas. Another thing is that now that you've had, you've probably decided to throw in aquarium salt if you haven't, if you have, you can begin to work on your decor inside your tank and you should make it appropriate to the type of fish you have in there. If you have mollies, they're probably going to want a little bit more dense growth as a, 
I haven't really put in much for mine, but they seem to be pretty happy as is, so it's not like it's completely necessary, but they would like to have hiding spaces. Mostly live breeders, because they're going to have babies within a few days if you get a female from the store. And you really want to have everything prepared, so I even have a breeding net here with a few young babies in it. And uh, for angels, you also want to have densely planted areas, because it seems that angels, their body and the, their natural environment is really dense and their body's designed to swim through that to catch prey. So it's, it's wise if you have angelfish, you might want to start up a garden inside your tank with live plants such as Amazon swords, which they'll definitely reproduce on if you have a male and female pair. Um, so if you get larger fish, you're probably not going to want to plant it as densely as they need more swimming room but I sort of keep mine half and half. I throw in, I have different caverns and different plants for the mollies to enjoy while harlequins they do enjoy plants but they'd rather have open sp swimming space for their school and if you're dealing with schooling fish I just want to throw in you should probably have three to five at the minimum. I keep three harlequins and three neon tetras in there but they sort of swim together just because they have similar similar size so they tend to do pretty well so in recap you really want to research your fish before you throw them in your aquarium because first off you gotta know what kind of water they like some fish like angels do like slightly acidic water uh, water softener if you you might never have heard of that, but you can have hard water or soft water, and your fish will swim better due to whichever you choose. Um, you want to know their natural environment, their temperature, because some fish, like goldfish, they prefer 60 degrees, where most tropical community love 70 to 80, somewhere between that range. I won't go too high in 80s, because it tends to stress some of the breeds out. Um, then you want to check your turbulence of your water, what they normally swim in. My fish are pretty calm water swimmers. You don't have any that are really pushing up streams. So I have my filter, my water on my tanks up to where my filter lid is so that when the filter water comes out it doesn't really turbulate my water. Yet I have an air bubbler here that aerates it, yet it doesn't completely cause my tank to shift. Um, Another thing is that you uh, you want to add fish slowly once you have, you should let your tank sit for two or more days just before you add fish because the bacteria has got to grow. But after you've got past that stage, what you want to do is you want to, um, you want to add fish slowly. You, want to, you don't want to jump into it because if you add more than three fish at a time, your ammonia is going to spike up and that will cause death to almost anything if it goes too high. Uh, angels for one are very sensitive to ammonia spikes and that will cause them to die in essence. Um, and that goes for most tropical fish. You just don't want to throw, even if they're schooling fish, just throw three in the first day and if you want to get a bigger school just go buy threes and bring them in like that. Um, that that's not for all schooling fish because some they have to adjust to their group members so you want to throw only one in at a time after you have an original group it's completely dependent on the fish um, with mollies and most live breeders including some guppies not all guppies are but males tend to be aggressive unless you have more than one female in the tank so I have two ma female mollies and then I have my male lure tail creamsicle and that keeps him from attacking my sword tail because since they're similar colored they enjoy going at it once in a while and my sword tail's not too aggressive for whatever reason he doesn't fight back too well so they they get along now that I've added a few females in there and I've already had babies as I've said so and that goes with sword tails if you have two male sword tails they're most likely gonna fight unless you have four females in there and Although you won't see it often with guppies, they occasionally will fight. If you don't, if you only have one female, two males, they'll fight over the female, and that'll cause fin rippage. Not necessarily death, but you just don't want your fins getting ripped up. And that's really with sword tails, you don't want that nice sword getting ripped up.
beyond that, just do your research and uh, it's pretty simple. When you add fish, you want to float the bagged fish in your aquarium for about 15 to 20 minutes or else they could go into shock from a sudden change in temperatures. What you want to do when you're researching your fish is look up what kind of diet they have as well because um, several fish will just go after the normal flake food. Others, however, need to have shrimp pellets and algae wafers such as cory catfish and plectos where others such as um, green spotted pufferfish and eels, peacock eels, birches, they need to have blood worms and blood worms do bring out the color of all tropical fish they really help enhance your aquarium's looks so after you've read about that and see what your fish likes then you should develop a proper menu and feed them accordingly. Once again I'm Joshua from Authentic Aquatics and I hope you enjoy your first step to becoming a hobbyist.